Hey everyone, welcome. This is our first call of 2023. Today we have Holly Lehman, who is one of my absolute favorite people in tech and has an amazing story of how she got here. So uh, you absolutely belong in your tech career. And if you don't have a tech career yet, talk to us, let us help you get one because there is so much happening over here and so much room really for everybody doing all sorts of different things in tech. So we do have a chat window and we encourage you to go ahead and type in the chat window if you have questions. Uh, there'll be time when you'll be able to come off mute and speak with us, although we are recording. So uh, do be aware that uh, you know if you, um, if you don't wanna be recorded, that's fine. You can kind of stay mute. And then at the end of the call, we'll stop the recording and you can come off and, uh, and hang out with us there. We also have our LinkedIn group. And we encourage you to join us on LinkedIn and uh, ask your questions, share what's going on in your world, uh, your tech world or your want to be tech world. So the APAC meeting is not meeting in January at the end of this month because they have a holiday in Australia, but they will be back in February and they're going to be talking about looking forward past 2023. So join uh, Sonia and Jess for that in the end of February. Uh, our next meetup for the U.S. is going to be Friday, January 27th at 9 a.m. in Altspace VR. You do not need a headset to participate. All you need is a Windows app or a Mac app, and you can join us in the metaverse. And then our next U.S. call on Teams is going to be Friday, February 10th. We're going to have Sarah Gilbert, who is an opera singer turned techie, and she is just fantastic. So uh, if you follow us on Eventbrite, you can go to witpros-meetings, uh, yeah, bit.ly witpros-meetings, and you can get all of, our, uh, all of our invites and information about all of our upcoming calls. Uh, Women IT Pros is a grassroots open source initiative. We do not claim to speak for Microsoft, even though I work for Microsoft, and in this case, Holly does work for Microsoft, but we have guests from all over tech companies, and we encourage you to let us know if there are people who you think have a great tech story. Uh, a lot of times I end up going to Microsoft people because I meet such amazing people at Microsoft with stories, but we, we do welcome everyone here. And uh, it's you know not an official Microsoft thing, but um, you know we, we encourage everybody to come and tell their tech story. So uh, we'd like to give you a chance to do some intros. You can either in the tech, uh, in the chat window, tell us who you are and where you work, what kind of work you do, and if you're not an IT pro, that's great. Let us know if you would like to be one and how we could help you with that one. If you would like to tell us kind of generally where you live, you might find a new neighbor here and uh, what your social media tags are so that we can find you, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, et cetera. If you are going to any events in 2023, uh, either virtual or in person, let us know because events are a lot more fun when you know somebody who's going. And if you plan to be going to any in-person events, let me know. We can help you try to find some women IT pros to meet up with there. And the best tip that we found from uh, Women in SharePoint, actually, they taught us if on the first day of the tech event, uh, oh, Holly's going to be at uh, Enterprise Connect in Orlando. So Holly, maybe you can say, hey, get together with people for a picture on Monday or whatever the first day of the conference is, uh, what they found is just getting together for a picture doesn't cost anything, mm -hmm. but it gives people a chance to kind of meet up on that first day. And then what they found is that during the rest of the days of the conference, people end up hanging out together. You have someone to go to coffee with or go to the, the social events with, and it's just a lot more value and, uh, and great networking. So would anyone like to come off mute and introduce themselves? And that's okay if you don't, because like I said, you know, it is recorded. But feel free to throw your information in the chat window. And uh, if, if people join later, feel free to throw it in again, because uh, the way Teams work, you're only going to see the chat from uh, the people after you've joined. And of course, this will also be on YouTube. And we encourage you, if you're here and you think, hey, this is awesome, we love Holly's story, go and tell people and, and get the word out to watch the recording on YouTube uh, probably later today. So Holly is someone who I actually worked with. Oh, we got someone else in the meeting here. There we go. Uh, Holly is someone I worked with several years ago and is just a dynamic force. Uh, I, I've seen her just take on so many huge challenges and 
and, and, and I've heard some of her, her previous stories, which hopefully she'll tell today here. So she is one of the most customer obsessed people I know and is out there totally rocking it right now on the, the team's marketing uh, organization as a product marketing manager. So Holly, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. You're really too kind with that intro. Thank you so much. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen. I'll give a quick intro and then we'll we'll jump into the, the fun. Um, actually, let me do this differently. Sorry about that. Let's see what we're going to share. I want to do sound. And then, sorry, let me, give me one second. No problem at all. We all do the little teams dance, right? Okay, if we're not going to talk about teams. Oh, I mean every, you know, okay, <laughs> video kidding. recording bands, every recording that I'm in, it's always. All right. So just to get started, um, while this is loading, my name is Holly Lehman. I am a product marketing manager with Microsoft Teams. I have been at Microsoft on and off for about eight years. I was here eight year or two years as a vendor, as an admin on what was before Azure. It was App Insight and Fabric Management. And then I left for two years to be a mom. I had my second baby and just really wanted to focus on, you know, that experience um, with my daughter and came back. I was determined to come back as a program manager. The, the team that I worked with was like, Holly, you can totally be a program manager and you need to think about it. And for those on the call that say, well, I have this title or that title, I can tell you personally that sometimes it's really hard to erase a certain title once you've got it. And for me, the admin title was was a tough one because people still wanted to put me in that bucket. And there's nothing wrong with being an admin. There's nothing wrong with any any role or title. But sometimes when you want to change careers, it can be pretty tough. Um, and because I don't have the normal um, road into tech, I've reached, I've had people reach out a few different times now to say, share your story. How do I get into tech? Why should I be in tech? And I think what we'll learn about today is why not only do we need all skills in tech, we need women. We really, really need women in tech. And that's something that I am passionate about. Um, and we'll get into my career and things like that in, in a minute. But um, so yeah, learn why you absolutely belong in your tech career today, tomorrow, and in the future. We're, we're so privy to know working in the tech world, like so many things are coming. And so um, it's not limited to just people who code or have a passion for tech, but we'll talk about in a bit why we do need all skills. So feel free to come off mic. I am a super like chill person. I do love community. Um, and we'll talk about what my community footprint looks like, but please feel free to ask questions. And honestly, I just hope that my story inspires someone else on this call to do one thing different in their career. So we're going to talk about my career journey um, because I think it really level sets why we all belong in tech. And then we're going to talk about taking the leap. What does that mean to be uncomfortable and get outside of your box? And why it's so important to do things today like what Kathy's doing and growing your network. Growing your network doesn't just mean in the women, women in tech industry. It means outside of your team, outside of your organization, outside of your company that you're working for. It's so important. And then lastly, we're going to talk about BU. It seems like some of these concepts, when I was writing this deck, I thought these are so fundamental, but sometimes it's the obvious that we actually miss. And so anyway, this is my story. So I hope that it's interesting and helpful. Um, so transferable skills. We don't often think about this um, in tech because we're like, oh, I work with engineers. They're very smart. They code end of story. But I'll tell you, um, being from Las Vegas, Nevada, born and raised, I've only been in Seattle now for about 11 years. My career journey had nothing to do with tech, but everything to do with tech. So when I was growing up, I started at Caesars Palace at, as a front desk agent working graveyard. And if I could tell you how interesting that was, um, but within that, I had to learn multiple point of sale systems. I had to learn process. I had to learn how to handle objections. I had to learn how to have customer service and really handle stress under pressure. Um, eventually, I went from hospitality 
to working at a police department writing in station reports. And um, it wasn't in the nicest neighborhood in Vegas. And you know what? I sort of stuck out. And there were some scary moments and ride alongs and running into people that we had arrested the night before. And you just kind of felt a little awkward, right? But that role taught me how to deal with different situations. That role taught me the importance of attention to detail. And it also told me the ability to write a story differently than you would think, right? It became about facts and details, who, what, when, where, versus I want to engage your heart and pull at your strings and have you on this emotional journey. Um, my dad was really funny and like, Holly, if you insist on doing this, at least go to a bigger department. So I ended up going to the Las Vegas County Jail where I did booking and releasing. And um, if you think about attention to detail, there was no other role that said attention to detail than when you're releasing an inmate back into the public. It also taught me that there was a stack of policies and procedures and laws and rules and regulations that I needed to learn. Um, I was lucky I was going to college at the time for law, so it all kind of worked together. But it was something that you really had to pay attention. There was a lot of legal ramification otherwise. And then couldn't handle yelling at inmates anymore. Went to Bellagio to do what I truly love, which is making guest experiences a success. Having people let me help them spend their money to make amazing experiences um, from decorating rooms to helping with, you know, a proposal. And then lastly, I worked at Aria. Um, I was an executive VP for an IT VP and the hotel VP. I was the fourth hire on the hotel team. So when I started that 4,004 room hotel was dirt. And my job was to do anything and everything that I was told to do. So although my title was an executive admin, that's really where I learned my PM skills. I was a program manager and I had no idea. It didn't matter what my title was. My first job, like, it's so funny how humble you can be. I thought, wow, like, I'm an EA for two VPs at this really cool property. Um, it's the biggest and best. And guess what I was told to go do? Research toilets. Yeah, I got to go and research toilets. Um, there's nothing more humbling than like measuring a toilet and figuring out why they chose this toilet. Um, and then really it was everything from that. It was anything from helping to select bedding to moving in for two weeks to check the tech support in all of the rooms to make sure that the bedding was done, the uniforms were selected, um, how to decide you know, which scent you like and what's gonna make a customer excited. So the reason I'm sharing this to really dig into the details are that all of these roles had nothing fundamentally to do with technology, but it gave me so many transferable skills that I use every single day in my world. From learning policy, learning procedure, really getting a customer to trust you and love you and say, hey, I'll give you feedback because I know that you're gonna take it to the engineering team and do something with it. It gave me the ability to humanize the technology because I knew how to take this element of what's in it for you and now equate that when I'm doing sessions or I'm working with customers. It also helped me see that I just have a passion for people, right? It didn't matter if they were a guest at, in Las Vegas or if they were someone that I met through Intune doing a you know customer connection program. At the end of the day, we all are fundamentally here because we have a passion for something. And I got to help them tell that story. The other piece is that, you know, within these different um, verticals or industries, I had to change the way I communicated. I had to change the, my linguistics. I had to think about who is my audience. So when I came to Intune and I got to just work with customers, that was awesome. I loved it. I got to work with customers. I got to help Kathy work with MVPs. I got to work a bit with partners. I went to Azure and guess what? The rug got pulled out from under me. And they said, all your fluffy, bright, happy emails that you send, no, it's data-driven, it's 
red, it's blue, it's get to the point, it's a too long did read because no one in engineering has time or really wants to sit and really connect like a marketer would or someone in community. So these transferable skills, I would say to anyone on the call, don't limit yourself to I do X role so I can only do this role. I would say when you're looking at your resume, think about what traits, skills, and strengths you have that are these transferable nuances that nobody else has. Everybody on this call has a completely different background, a completely different personality, and completely different skill set. And if we can take those transferable skills and bring them into tech, it is a powerhouse of what we can create. So stepping out of your box, when I think about going to Azure, I was so excited, you guys. Like I thought, okay, I've got Intune under my belt, configuration manager, and now I'm gonna go to this big bad Azure that like is this conglomeration of all this technology that makes Microsoft awesome in the cloud. And I worked with the MVP community. Um, that was awesome. I worked with customers, I worked with partners. And then one day we have what's infamously called a reorg and all of the things that I love and I thought were awesome and I had passion around got absolutely pulled out from under me, went to where they belonged in the community space. And I was given a spreadsheet to review Azure technical feedback on Azure Marketplace. And then I got to look at that spreadsheet and explain to the engineering team in Israel who only met at 3 a.m. and spoke Hebrew about this technical feedback that they already knew. It made me so uncomfortable, but it also made me know I can learn a new role outside of my skill, scope, strength, and passion, and still be successful at it. And now looking back, when I go to events and I hear customers say, does Microsoft really listen to feedback? I get to raise my hand and say, yes, yes, because I personally reviewed lines and lines and lines of feedback. And then, then I had to figure out why isn't this working? What is the issue? Do I work with marketing for education? Do we work with engineering to fix bugs? Kathy herself used to spend hours and hours and hours looking at user voice feedback. We no longer have user voice, but we have the feedback portal. And there really is somebody behind that feedback portal that are reading those lines. And so when I'm meeting with customers, I can now have that lens that, yeah, maybe it wasn't my favorite role, but it sure did teach me a lot. And now I have a different level of empathy for our customers. I understand the pain points that they're dealing with. And oh, by the way, in all of this, like I'm not coding anything, but I am sitting in meetings, sharing the feedback with our engineering team. And as a female in tech, I was told multiple times, if you're going into engineering, change your look. Don't wear as much makeup. You might want to change what you're wearing. Not because it was inappropriate, but it was too feminine. And I thought, well, you know what? I know that I'm smart. I know that I can walk into this room of strong, brilliant males that are very technically savvy and explain to them what they can't do, which is get into a room full of people you don't know and get them talking. Go into an event where no one knows you, but they all seem to know you and get them to trust you to share feedback. So in getting outside of your box, you also learn what your strengths are. I would also encourage everyone on the call to do one thing that scares you. So as I was stepping out of my box, um, I wanted to push myself. I was sitting in engineering. I had learned how to restructure my emails to communicate more effectively. I had learned how to do a role that I wasn't super passionate about. But I also wanted to push myself. And I said to my team, I want to do a live demo at a customer event. I want to be able to say I I've done it. And so, you know what? Yeah, I learned how to write an ARM template. And I learned that. I could do it and understand it. It didn't mean I have to love it, but it really made me have some confidence. And it also helped me understand the panic that the speakers feel when they go in and hoping that the, the demo is going to work. 
I also worked with mentors to say, hey, I don't want to learn PowerShell, but I want to learn PowerShell because I want to do a demo live. Can you mentor me? And they loved the fact that I was tenacious and authentic and was really pushing myself outside of my box. <clears throat> and I have to tell you, it was at MMS when I did that live PowerShell demo. It didn't fail. And some of the people in the room came up to me and said, if you can do this, so can I. That's all I cared about. And I went to my room and bawled my eyes out because I was so stinking proud that I did it. I was uncomfortable. So anybody on the call, I would really encourage you to pick one thing that absolutely scares you so that you can show yourself that you can do it. You know, we talk about events and the ability to connect with people live. Um, I never realized the power of this opportunity until COVID. So, you know, during COVID, um, I connected with an MVP, Isadora Katanik, and we'll talk about our passion and what we've done together. But it was this power of network. It was this power of people in your community. And we didn't have face-to-face. -face. So it allowed me to connect with people like Luis Fries, who's another MVP, and um, Donna from uh, PwC, just so many people in the tech community that you might have seen in an event, and now you're able to continue that relationship. And in meeting with those people, you learn so many skills. And in reading up on the power of mentorship, you know, it says that 71% of Fortune 500 companies have mentorship programs. Microsoft is so proud of having mentors in your team, out of your team, cross collaborating. And what I like to share with people is this. If you ask someone to be your mentor, the worst thing that they're gonna say is, no, I don't have time. That's really the worst thing that can happen. And hearing no is another yes. It means, great, who am I gonna talk to next? I had somebody that I really respect. I onboarded him at Microsoft. He's now a CTO in NASDAQ. And I reached out to him and said, hey, Nick, can you mentor me? And he respectfully said, I respect your time and mine enough that I don't have the time to take on another mentor. But here's what I will tell you. That meant more to me than somebody not taking value of my time or theirs. The other is it is a confidence booster. When you think about the ability to go to somebody and say, hey, I really admire what you do in XYZ role. I would love to learn more. But the other piece is that you need to come ready with an agenda, do the work, do the homework. The mentor that I end up meeting, I have two, three mentors. They've all become my close friends. So when you do the work and you share your passion and you're there to, to really help amplify who they are as well, it ends up being a bond that really pulls people together. I, al I also say that mentors come in all shapes and sizes. People tend to think that a mentorship is this fixated, we're going to meet this day, this time for this many minutes or this many hours, and here's what we're going to do. And sometimes, yeah, that is what it turns out to be. Sometimes a mentor is a one-time coffee break. Sometimes a mentor is meeting someone at an event and asking them, hey, I love how you present. What were some skills or traits or tricks that you learned? So mentorship can look so different. And I would quantify this by saying network, mentorship, and tribe are all very, in my opinion, unique and special. What Kathy is growing here is really a network of women in tech. A mentorship is a relationship where you're growing each other in your career and career development. And finding a tribe is something that is very precious to me. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's a friendship, but it's people that inspire others and bring them along with them. So I've had people in Microsoft, like Kathy, who have reached out to me and said, I really admire this XYZ thing. I would love to bring you along with me. I might need a predecessor. I might need someone to fill my shoes when I'm gone and move on to something else. A tribe are people who really take you under their wing and lift you up to the next level and support you in your endeavors. And this was something that I really was impacted by in this last year. Having somebody reach out to me and say, you have a really cool career story. I want you to go to Denmark and share it in front of 300 people. 
And I felt like, what's my story in comparison to so many others? But then I realized that there's a lot of people out there that don't understand the power of women in tech, the skills that we can't be taught that come natural, the ability to regenerate who you are in your career, and the passion that a lot of women bring simply because they want to set an example for the kiddos in their home to show that you can do this, you can be successful, and you can make something out of yourself and set an example that you can love your, what you do. Like, I'm on a roll right now. I love what I do. And so for me, network, mentorship, and a tribe are all very, very important and impactful. Part of that network um, connected me with Isadora Katanique in Switzerland during COVID. We both have a huge passion for community. I adore her for the simple fact that she is the only female MVP in Switzerland. She is a non-coding professional MVP, and she's an MVP for community. So when I say to think outside of your box and your role and your skills, that's exactly what she did. And when I talk about being scared to hear no, I probably emailed her three times and then deleted it because I was scared she was going to say no. But I had this idea like, you love community. I love community. Let's virtually travel the world and interview all sorts of people in tech. Bring in the diversity and inclusion, geolocations, time zone, male, female, just all encompassing and talk about their career stories. And we have learned so much by doing this and we grew our network. The other thing I would say is the ability to learn from one another. When Izzy and I share our story about Head in the Cloud, we talk about her strengths versus my strengths. So part of that networking is finding people that are really great at something that you might not be because you have something that they're not that strong at. It's not bad. It's actually a great partnership. And in working with Microsoft, and no matter what company you're working in, what I do love about Microsoft is that if you have a passion for something and it will create brand love, community enhancement, and showcase your team and what you work on, typically they're not going to say no. They're going to say attach it to a goal or a team OKR. And, and if you want to spend the time to do it, go for it. So within Microsoft, I was able to create Partner Spotlight or I interviewed partners once a month to really shine a light on what they're doing because I had a passion for the hidden talents and hidden impact they were having on our customers and our, you know, we talk about monthly active usage. A lot of that is coming from our partners and we weren't showcasing it. The data was getting dirty between what the partners were doing versus MVPs versus the TAMs and things like that. So they said, go for it, try it. And we did, and it was a success. And the same thing with Head in the Cloud. We're on year two now, and it's something that we're super passionate about. But also within that um, side hustle, we've all heard this new Bing word side hustle, um, we've learned a lot of lessons. And for those on the call today that are like, I code, I love to code, this has nothing to do with me, you're wrong. It has everything to do with you because this is my story, but when I talk about being able to pull skills in, it, it means if you want to go write a book, write a book. If you want to be a fashion designer, go be a fashion designer. And then bring all those skills and talents back into the office because every single thing you're doing is going to teach you something else that is impactful and is something unique to you. And as soon as we start to really, truly grow the diversity, it's amazing the work that we can do together. So in doing Head in the Cloud, Heart in the Community, I've interviewed so many incredible humans in tech. And, you know, from we have the um, director for accessibility at Microsoft, Donna Sakar, and we'll talk about this in a minute. But she talks about being loudly yourself. Um, I'm trying to keep up with the, the IMs, but I saw somebody else had said they were told that they... Um, we're told they're too feminine or to change their style, right? Not only is Donna running the accessibility team for Microsoft, she is a book writer. She is a fashion designer. She is a speaker. And she talks about being loudly yourself. 
showing up every day. She wears a dress every day. She's got her makeup done and she's brilliant. She does code, right? Um, I interviewed uh, Ducks. He is the um, chief marketing officer at Avpoint. And he talks about branding yourself. For him, it's kindness. You know, you're allowed to set your brand. You're not allowed to set your reputation. So take your brand and really make it impactful. Um, anyway, so one of the things that I like to share in this session is a moment that I had when I interviewed Scott Hanselman, and this was probably one of the pinnacle moments in my career. So hopefully you can hear it. I shared it with sound on. So let's, Kathy, give me a thumbs up if we can hear it, okay? So I, I have to say, I share this, but this was a very humbling moment for me to have one of my guests basically change the talk track. But the way he did it set such a respectful example for other men in tech on how we can truly be allies and then for women in tech, women to women, men to men, it anymore, it doesn't even matter. That if you're giving constructive feedback in a way that will embrace another human's strength and skill, it's okay to do it. I had someone that Kathy and I both know quite well lecture me to the point I was in tears when I said I, was, uh, I wasn't technical. This was a very different experience. He made me feel like I, I mattered. And that he saw me past my name and title. He knew who I rolled up to. He knew who my manager and their manager, what, what I worked on. And so it told me, like, I see you. I see you behind your title, behind your alias. And I want to lift you up. And that we do need all skills in tech. And the way he said it really made me think the ability that when I went to Azure, and I used to say I'm faking it every day, and really the partners would say, actually, you've taken something very technical and you've simplified it in a way that's digestible. So for those on the call, if you code, that's awesome, and I applaud you. And if you are the person that codes, but you're scared to run an event, go do it. If you're the person on the call that's like, I love running events, but like, Excel spreadsheets make me panic. I get hives. I think I'm allergic to Excel spreadsheets and data. But you know what? I work with people that are really great at it. And so listening to Scott's feedback really humbled my perspective. And it really made me remember that I may not be quantifiably technical, if you will, from a, from a coding perspective, but I've learned the fundamentals to the depth of four products. Intune, Configuration Manager, Azure, and now Teams. I've gone from being in the back of the room running events because I didn't think that I was enough to being in the front of a room in front of a thousand people doing an opening keynote with the president of OneDrive. And now being able to take my own executive briefing, speaking to customers, running multiple sessions on Teams. So I would say whatever it is that scares you, go try it and really listen to the respectful feedback. There's gonna be people out there that don't give respectful feedback and I would say ignore them. But the people that are giving you feedback because they want to make you better, humbly listen with an open mind. And then when my husband saw this slide, he's like, really Holly, you're gonna go talk in Denmark with 300 people and quote Taylor Swift? Yes, I absolutely am gonna quote Taylor Swift. Um, just be yourself, there is no one better. 
And again, like we talked about earlier, there's been some days where I walked in and I just felt like I don't belong in this team. I don't belong in this role. But you know what? If we all look the same, dress the same, um, we were all coders. I, I jokingly say, if we all coded, nobody would sell it, right? If we were all marketers, no one would go create new technology. So we need all skills in tech. Even if you're someone like me, this is so funny. Like I'm, I was never passionate about technology because I didn't really understand how it connected people because I lead with empathy and human connection. But now that I found a product I work on, I freaking love my job. I love my job. I love what I do. And now I run the What's New in Teams blog and I put my own spin on it. I do a funny, like very whimsical chit chat opening on the intro. And then I go through and read all the, the feature descriptions. And I look at it from a perspective of an end user who's never touched Teams. Can I look at that feature and then go do an action? And if I can't understand it, guess what? My kid's soccer coach who uses Teams probably can't. The frontline worker at the Coke vendor company probably can't. And the IT admin who's so high level that probably doesn't look into the weeds has no clue that they can do all these features and functionality because they're so worried about what's on the roadmap. So my role is to loudly be myself. And when I go and present, I usually present with someone who was a mentor, now a friend, Stephen Rose. And I put my own loud spin on it. I talk about the human element of Teams technology. And then Stephen comes in with the awesome technical depth and together we get people excited about our product. I'm not afraid anymore to stand up on a podium and say, I don't code, or I worked on Intune and I could give you a high level of what it is, but I really love Teams because it's connected people all over the world. And here's all the cool things that it can do. And in addition, by having this footprint in admin, customer service, hospitality, law, engineering, and now marketing, I'm able to speak to all different types of audiences and spin the, the talk track for who I'm speaking with. Because guess what? My world and my um, network got real big real fast. And so it only enhances people's capabilities. So, um, you know, with about five minutes left, I love to wrap with five reasons why you belong in tech as a quick recap. Um, just remember that your skills are your own. Uh, you know, someone on the call, Priscilla, works for DGM. One thing I love about David James is he always really respected Kathy and I. Hey, you really know how to connect with the customer. You really know how to run an event or you really know how to get feedback and get it to the engineering team. So make your skills your own. Look at your background as opportunities, not I can't or I didn't or I don't have. Remember that those skills are your own 100%. And if we all came to the table with the same exact background, it would be real boring. But because Kathy ran MVP Summit and I ran Airlift or Ignite, we were able to say, hey, here's some really cool ideas on how we can make certain things better and enhance what we're doing for the company because we could brainstorm together coming from she's in theater, right? I'm hospitality and law. So we were able to really have an, a huge impact together. And remember, you know, your tribe is your door to include others. Um, when I was given the opportunity to do a keynote or to do a session, um, as soon as I was done, my tribe would say, now go do that for somebody else. It's really about handing the, the flag over to the next person. Um, tell him I said hi, and I hope to see him at Ignite as well, too. If he wants to do an MMS topic on Teams, hit me up. Um, and remember that your passions drive your ambition. So my passion is people. It's about helping others be better, do better, feel better, know that they can take technology to enhance their business goals, strategy, and solutions. Um, it's not the actual technology I'm super passionate about. I want people to knock on my door like Chris Gill, or um, not Chris Gill, sorry, um, Sean, he just started at Microsoft and he said, Holly, if it wasn't for you inviting me to the customer connection program and showing me the insides of Microsoft, I don't know I would be here today. 
So you have a far bigger impact if you use your skills and your passions within your day job. And even when you're like, Holly, I hate my job. Guess what? I didn't like looking at uh, technical feedback on Azure Marketplace, but I was able to say, how do I enhance this role with my passion so that I can learn from something that I don't love, use that to get outside of my box, but also show my manager, like I can make something really cool and enhance our team because of my passion. And remember your abilities are uniquely your own. Um, I pretty much doubt many people have the same hospitality, law, hospitality, tech background, or, you know, someone that I've interviewed who was um, a chef and a meat um, deli carver. I forget the word now, but anyway, they needed someone to set up an IT team and they basically said, do you want to set up a server and put in configuration manager? And guess what? She loved it. She stopped cutting deli meat. And now she's a principal level at um, a partner company. So just remember, your abilities um, are what make you uniquely yourself and also your brand. That's a whole nother talk track. But having your own brand is really important and you get to define what that is. Nobody else. And just remember, you're the driver of your own path. And this is something that I did not realize until I would say this last two years. Nobody's going to raise their hand for you and say, Amanda really needs a promotion. It's probably going to be them that they want a promotion, right? We are all here for ourselves. You might be an advocate but of others, but you need to be your own advocate and be the loudest person in the room. So when I tell people, if you want to provide feedback on Microsoft Teams, don't just crab about it, go do something. Go, you know, put feedback in the portal, talk to your team, talk to your account team. I would say the same thing when it comes to you driving your career. Don't just say you want the promotion or say you want to change your career or try a new role. You have to be the loudest person in the room to advocate for yourself and the reason why. And that's it. That's all I have. Um, a little bit about me. Uh, I would highly encourage you to check out Head in the Cloud, Heart in the Community. Um, I am a huge advocate of Microsoft Teams and um, the blog. Feel free to read and share the blog and reach out anytime on LinkedIn or Teams if you have career or mentorship questions. And then also, if you are an early adopter of Microsoft Teams, I highly encourage you to look at MicrosoftAdoption.com to understand tips and tricks on how to adopt various M365 products. And thank you for having me. It was an absolute pleasure. I hope this helped and encouraged someone on the call. Thank you, Holly. Wow. You know, I, I just, one of the reasons that I do this is because I want other people to be inspired. But what I find a lot of times is that I just get so inspired. I mean, I've known Holly for years now, but but just hearing all of this, it's, it's just kind of like it's my own shot in the arm for what I need to, you know, to, like why we keep doing this. So thank you. It was really amazing. And we have some time for questions. So um, if you want to throw questions in the chat window or if you want to come off mute, um, I actually have one while, while people may be thinking or typing is um, you talked about restructuring your email to be more effective. And so you've had mm -hmm. so many different types of communication along the way. I wonder if you could just elaborate a little bit about, you know, some of the different lenses you've had to put on your communications in your different roles. Yeah, no, that that was something that was a really hard lesson for me, but I'll tell you, it took my impact in my role from here to here. Um, and it's not about changing your personality. Like it took me a minute to realize that. So I'm super warm and fluffy. And if anybody were to reach out to me or see me in an event, I'm hugger. Like I'm just yellow. I'm a big, like I love people and community, but I had to realize that that's great when I'm talking to community, like MVPs, customers, right? Like they need to see Microsoft has a heart. And I do, right? I want them to be successful. But on the engineering side of the house, they were very data driven. They're very busy. They want to code. They want to look at feedback. They don't want to talk to a human. So when we have that too long didn't read, they want that too long didn't read. So I had to restructure my thought where it's not warm and fluffy, 
Nobody cares about my dog or my kids or how your weekend was. It's really get to the point. And I, that's hard for me because I take that as a bit too direct and a bit rude. But I realize I can still be me. Here's your objective. Here's the action. Here's the template where you're like, you really structure it differently. The context is basically the same. What is the objective? What is the action? What is the go do? And what do I need to know? And so then I just restructured it and it really made a huge impact. And I had great mentors that sat with me and were like, hey, let me help you be better. So when I talk about feedback, if someone's willing to kindly mentor you, let them do it. And then when I got to marketing, I used my too long, didn't read engineering driven email. And my manager reached out to me and she was like, Holly, what was that? Nobody in marketing is going to read that. Send out something quick and fun. Kathy, let's connect. 20 minutes, find it on my calendar. So when people are telling you how they communicate, listen, because you can be so much more successful when you listen. And that's something that I share with people when they're doing Teams Adoption. Again, totally different topic. But our SLT sets the example that Teams is our platform. Teams is where we work. Camera on. But it's by their behavior. So when you see people writing emails or you see the communication style change, it doesn't mean you necessarily have to change your personality. But if you understand the way your team or your organization or your manager communicates best, it's it's going to go really far for you. So, yeah. Great. And I'm going to put a link in the chat window and I'll put it in the um, YouTube comments. We had um, how to write better faster uh, as our call back in November of 2021. And it was a fantastic talk. Uh, so that's, you know, just some different kinds of tips. And, and one of the things she talks about a lot is, um, you know, how to how to kind of get the, the most important part right up front. Uh, bottom line yeah. up front is what they say in the military or uh, I can't, can't remember what the other one is, but um, yeah. Well, and the other thing to think about is we're all so busy. We're all busy. I don't care mm -hmm. what your role is. And if you're not really just getting to the point in the beginning, no one reads the bottom line, right? Um, and so that's just hard for me because I like to, hey, Kathy, how are you? How's your daughter? Da, da, da. Okay. And then five rows down, you get to the point. So yeah, understanding how your team communicates and that's something that we do in Microsoft. We do um, a, a test to see, you know, are you a communicator? Are you community? Are you data? Are you direct? You know, and it, it does help. And it's the same thing with your team. I'm just curious, is there anybody on the call that are thinking about changing roles or not in tech and want to be in tech? And you can put it in the window if just curious. No? Okay. Well, look at me at somebody who is in school. Uh, oh, that awesome. was actually me. Um, yeah. I'm actually thinking about going into tech. I'm still looking at like different roles and stuff like that. But I first got in majoring in cybersecurity. So right now I'm finishing this is my last semester and I'm still looking at like um, certifications, stuff like that and like bettering my resume. But I know for sure I want to be in tech, but my role is still like looking. I'm still looking, you know, career wise and what roles, mm -hmm. but I'm happy to hear, you know, everything that you said in this presentation, you know, it gives a lot of, you know, woman power, which is amazing. Well, and we well, need more, more women in tech. We absolutely do. Um, and so in security. I would encourage you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you actually. People in security. <laughs> Microsoft is doing a huge um, focus on security right now, now more than ever. And so um, what I would say for someone new in or in tech Give it a minute. Um, it's a it's a tough industry to get into, but once you really get settled in the right team and the right role, um, that that will grow you a lot. And when people see your skills and your passion for what we all need, which is you know the cybersecurity element, um, you're gonna have a great career. You really will. And you know, just looking around at what I found on Twitter, um, you know, I, I when I started Women IT Pros, I was trying to find, you know, where where do I find the women who are in the non-coding parts of tech? And I found a couple of groups, like you know, there, there's women in cloud and um, uh, 
women in security, I, I found several different groups that are all about women in security. So I think there's a lot of opportunity in there and a lot of opportunity that doesn't necessarily involve coding. So I'll put a link. I have a Twitter list for uh, birds of a feather groups that are, you know, other groups that are, are trying to pull women together in those areas. And I, I think you might be able to find some good mentors in there and some good contacts and, you know, reach out to these people on Twitter and just say, hey, you know, I'm a student, you know, <laughs> just give, you know, like really specific, well-formed requests, you know, don't, don't say, tell me how to start a career in, in tech, but, you know, think about something really specific that they might be able to answer for you. And, and people are always willing to help or like Holly said, if they aren't, then just go find somebody else. Yeah, I had someone that I really respect um, to, I asked, well, you know, Brad Anderson to oh, yeah. be on Head in the Cloud. And he said no, and it was okay. I, and I understood why. He was so kind in his reply. So it's like, I don't know, the worst you can hear is no, and, and that's fine. But it's like people that want to be MVPs and they reach out and they're like, help me be an MVP. Well, if you go do the work, I have no problem advocating. But if you do the work, and you're willing to come with a very specific ask and then follow up, I think people are always really welcome to mentor. Absolutely. I wanted to ask something. You mm -hmm. talked about doing the scary thing. Mm -hmm. um, how, what was like your, did you just jump into it? Um, or, you know, let me just give you an example. I struggle with public speaking, um, even just within my team. I just, I want to die every time, even speaking right now. <laughs> I struggle with that, but it is a part of, you know, my job and it is something that I want to improve on. And I have been doing it for a few years now, but even still, like, I just struggle getting past the fear and doing that. Well, I'm proud of you for talking on this call. Like, I mean, honestly, for me, I'm very impulsive in some ways. And I just sign up for things. And then I'm like, oh, crap, why did I just sign up for that thing? And then I go do it. Like, after um, I signed up for the DNI session with 300 people, I was like, what in the world am I doing? Like, I, but I did it. And then I, and then you check the box. And I, Scott Hanselman said something after that session because I gave myself feedback. I'm very hard on myself, Priscilla. Like I did a session and I ran um I ran early, right? It was supposed to be 40 minutes and I was like 25 minutes, right? And I was so mad at myself and I gave my I was like, "Okay, how can I make this better?" And I really like was tough on myself. And Scott said, he goes, "Holly, whenever I do a session, I'm always hard on myself as well. I give myself 15 minutes to be mad and then I move on." And so what I thought about was, I'm not going to be mad, but I'm going to identify like, I just did that thing that was scary. Here's where I can improve next. Now I'm going to move on. And I'm going to acknowledge that I did that scary thing. So when I did the power, so I did PowerShell, I did a PowerShell script um, at MMS and I picked it because I was like, hold on, if all these guys in the room can figure out PowerShell, like I can figure it out. It just it's not something I am like, yay, this is really exciting. So it just kind of depends what what hits you. And for you, if it's presenting and doing public speaking, I would say sign up for every possible opportunity. Have somebody mentor you. Ask for feedback from people that aren't just going to pat you on the back, but say, here's how you can en enhance this. So like I was told, slow down. Um, I was told before you speak, after you're done with the thought, stop and take a breath. And it seems weird and uncomfortable, but it forces you to define each thought and give yourself that moment to just stop and calm down. Um, and then ask people for opportunities, right? So when I said, will you teach me how to write an ARM template? This poor guy knew this wasn't going to be a 30 minute deal. This was days and days and days of learning how to write an ARM template. Um, I'll probably never do it again, but I felt really good after walking through the process. So I don't know if that helped. It does. Thank you. Yeah. And I, I put a link and I'll put it in the um, YouTube notes again. Uh, in January of 2020, we had um, Alicia Dara talk about uh, train your voice, claim your power. 
And that I was saw a fantastic that. talk. You. Yeah, definitely go and check that one out. Got and the funny minute. part is usually you're the only one that hears that you're nervous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you want help speaking, you know, talk to me, talk to Holly. Uh, you know, I'm a former theater professor or theater uh, uh, major and um, I, I've been a professional trainer for years. So even though my voice is catching on itself right now, I'm usually pretty good at public speaking and happy to help people. You're great well. at public speaking, Kathy. <laughs> so. Well, we're just about at time. Any last minute questions? Anyone want to throw anything else out? And reach out on Twitter if you want, mm -hmm. like if something comes up later, like I never mind people reaching out to me and I will be at Enterprise Connect. I'm probably gonna be on the DNI panel um, talking about career and tech. So if you're at Enterprise Connect or you wanna go use code mm -hmm. Microsoft to get a discount and reach out to me anytime. I'm just, I feel very, very thankful that you had me on today. This was a blessing. So thank you. Thank you so much, Holly. Really appreciate all of you being here. Uh, remember that we do have our um, meetup in alt space on the last Friday of the month. And uh, we don't have an APAC meeting this month, but we will have uh, an APAC meeting in February. And then we'll also have Sarah Gilbert on the second Friday in February coming back with us on Teams. So join us here, catch us on YouTube and keep going out there and being awesome. Thanks. <laughs>